Hi everybody, my name is Christian Ross and I am an attorney in Atlanta, Georgia with Campbell and Brandon and I wanted to hit a topic that I think a lot of people have struggled with over the last couple of years in a tough and tight inventory market. So we're seeing more and more multiple offers. We've all struggled with that, trying to get our offer noticed. And a lot of times, you know, we're doing a quick search. We're, we're doing going to open houses on the weekends. And then it's Saturday night. It's Sunday morning. It's something along those lines. And you need to put together a contract. Your client is ready to make an offer and they're looking to you to put it together and send it to them. This should be pretty easy. Um, everything is templated, all the forms that we're used to, the GAR form specifically, they're available to us. Um, all the software that we use, or whatever software it is that you're using, it should be pretty easy to populate buyers' names and sellers' names and things like that. Well, how do I make it even faster for you? Where do some people get tripped up and how can we speed that, speed that process up so that you're not wasting your Sunday morning when you could be with family or doing multiple offers as opposed to just the one. So if we look at the screen here, I've pulled up F201, which is our purchase and sale agreement for resale properties. It will look and work the exact same for new construction as well. Um, and would work the same for lot and land or, or uh, any of the other contracts that GAR has. And we're specifically gonna look at the um, key terms and conditions section one. And it is the property identification, section A, and legal description, section B. So section A, pretty easy, um, property identification. So we have the address, the city, the county, zip code, the MLS number, if applicable, and the tax parcel ID. Now, that leads me to my first point. You have the two ways that people are getting these tax ID numbers. And it is either through relist, which is a, um, an option through FMLS, or you're going directly to the tax assessor website. I would say either one of them probably works the same for this particular option, but my preference is gonna be the tax assessor website. And there's one main reason. One, Relist, as easy as it is, it is an aggregator from all the other county websites. It is not the source of the information. So if there is an error in the code, if there's an error in what property or what information is being dragged, you will see it on Relist and you may not see it on the tax assessor website. So my recommendation, recommendation number one, go directly to the county assessor website to pull the tax ID number, pull the seller's information, pull the address, um, and some other things that you will see shortly. So if we go down to legal description, so property identification, easy enough, address, uh, tax ID number. Legal description is where a lot of people get tripped up more than anything, and it's the main point of this particular video. So you are given four options to fill out the legal description. You do not have to fill out all of them. You, if you can choose any four. Now, before I go much further, I'm gonna give you a disclosure. Here's my disclaimer, actually. Um, there are brokers out there that may ask you to do it a certain way, and I'm not the authority I'm not your boss, I'm not your broker, your license will be under their license, so I would go with their recommendation. So that's my disclosure. This is just, as long as you are allowed to do it this way, go ahead and give this a shot. So let's look at the four options. Now, option number one, attached as an exhibit here too. That's what a lot of people are using. They're going to the warranty deed or the quick claim deed, they're pulling the legal description, and they are attaching it as an exhibit. That is a wonderful option, it's great, We'll see why I may not want you doing that if you're pressed for time. So let's go on to number two, condominium. So there's a, another form, F204, for the condominium uh, resale purchase and sale exhibit. It kind of works the same way. It's basically going to act as, a, as an exhibit. So section number three, option number three, the same as described in deed book blank, page blank, of the land records of above county. I love that option when you are pressed for time. And we're gonna go over that as our main suggestion. But let's go to number four real quick. And it says, or, and then number four, and it actually allows you to give the template to fill out this form. So land lot blank of the blank district, blank section, uh, a specific lot, block, unit, phase. You may not have all of those options, but you're gonna take the information that you are aware of. Maybe you have a plat, maybe you have a security deed, maybe you have something else and you can fill out all this information 
That is essentially the legal description. That's exactly what the legal description is. And it's specifically a short form legal description. So it's a platted property. We can reference the plat book, reference the land lot, the district, the section, and specifically the lot. So that's a really wonderful thing, specifically if you are using new construction. So option number four, let's say it's a new construction property. Um, you know, there may not be a vesting deed that specifically itemizes this lot. Well, go to the plat, find the lot that you have, all the information is there, and just go ahead and fill it in. Land lot, district, section, county, land, uh, lot, subdivision name, and actually that would be a great option for a new construction property. All right, so let's go back to the main point here, and that is section number three. Again, if we go to our hypothetical it is Sunday morning. You are pressed for time. You've got to get out these offers. You know it's a multiple offer situation. You know that the sellers are reviewing everything that afternoon, maybe that evening, and you want to be the first in the inbox. So number three is great because all you have to do is know where to find the warranty deed. Where is it recorded? Deed book and page. And that information, 99% of the time, I'll, I'll backtrack, maybe it's 90% of the time, but a lot of the time it is available on the tax assessor website. So we will look at that in just a second, but going back to you know section A on this, you've already gone to the tax assessor website, you've already found your tax ID number, um, whether it's DeKalb County or Gwinnett, Fulton County, Cobb, Cherokee, um, I would say the majority of the counties are going to give you free access to their tax assessor website. And one of the tabs is the sales tab. And I'm showing you an example right here on the screen of going to the Cobb County website. And we're going to scroll down. We're going to go to property search. We're going to find the address. Now that we're into the property report, you can see the tax ID number there at the top. And then if you scroll down, you'll go to sales. And it has the most recent qualified sales. And on this one, it's going to show one right at the top there. It's the most recent dated one. It has the deed book and it has the page. It's wonderful. You didn't have to go on GSCCCA. If you notice, I didn't have to log in, give any sort of subscription, or you know, I don't have to pay any fees to get this information. And you know, that is for any of these counties I've mentioned. Uh, off the top of my head, the only one that doesn't give you free access is probably Douglas, but Cobb gives you one extra piece that is pretty cool. And if you click this link to the right, it's gonna show you a copy of the actual deed that is recorded at that deed booking page. You don't need that. It is great, if it's Cobb, you should be using this feature, you should have it, but let's say it's Fulton County. Deed book, page, throw it into page one, section one B, um, section three under that. So the same as described in deed book and then fill this number in, page, fill that number in. You now have a fully described property. You didn't have to ask any of the attorneys to, to grab one. You didn't have to have a subscription. It's pretty easy. You didn't spend, sit here and wait. Now, here's my last suggestion. So this is the uh, suggestion number three. This is kind of how we'll follow up with this whole thing. This gets you in and out. You don't know if the sellers can accept your offer. You don't even know if they're going to counter, but this gets you an offer. You didn't waste a bunch of time. You didn't waste someone else's time. You didn't ask your broker for the legal. You just put it together. And if the seller comes back, if they counter, if they want to bind the contract, that's when you can go and you can double check the legal. You can make sure it's right and you will have a fully binded contract. Um, this is just my suggestion. If you are struggling, if you are you know, middle of the night and you just need to get this out and you're not feeling well, um, I love this option. Legally, it will bind your contract. Just be careful. And again, this is that disclaimer. If your broker requires you to do it a different way, if they want you to always verify the legal description through them, if they only require, you know, if they require certain things, then do not rely on my advice. Uh, for your purposes. But if you have the authority to do this, it's a wonderful tool to use. It'll speed this process up and you'll be so much, so much better of an agent and more responsive, hopefully. Hopefully you'll get more deals because of it. So I hope that's very helpful. If you need anyone at Campbell & Brandon, we would love to help you. 
Uh, again, my name is Christian Ross, and I am an attorney with Campbell & Brandon here in Atlanta, Georgia.